morning, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode um, in the Coaching Connection. I'm one of the co-founders, Rina Lang. And today I'm pleased to, to have with us Joanne Homestead. And we met a couple of weeks and <laughs> she actually helps people with their emailing sequences, with the copy and such. This is a topic that is very, very kind of like recent for me. And this is an area that I must embrace if I want to grow. And I'm so happy to have her with us and learn more from her about how she's doing, um, how she's approaching this whole email sequencing thing. We all know there is so much power in having your own emailing list. And if you don't have one, this is the number one step that you should take before you, before you start doing anything else. Even if you still feel like it's a bit daunting writing your emails, just do it. I mean, I've been... Uh, building my emailing list for the last over a year now. And I still have not really made hayway when it comes to my having campaigns and building, having all that, that build out. But this is now definitely a topic for me, something that I need to embrace now, but it's good to have actually an emailing list. So don't put the card before the horse, build up the audience first, and eventually you will know what content you put in front of your audience. So that's that's the more right approach. I hope you agree with me, uh, Joanne. So yeah, tell us a bit more about yourself and how did you get started and, and tell us more about the work that you do. Sure. Hi, I'm so happy to be here, Rina. Um, thanks for having me on. And thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us live. And if you're watching the replay, um, thanks for listening in. Um, I started in teaching. So I was a school teacher for 15 years in elementary school. A lot of people think that's a lot of gluing and scissors, but actually <laughs> teaching has a lot to do with curriculum development, which is really about aligning your message, which is really about leading students to take action. Um, and it was a lot of what I loved about teaching was um, collaborating with other teachers and instructional coaches and the leadership. And so luckily for me, these are two things that I get to do as an email copywriter and strategist is one, really creating aligned messaging that leads to action for my clients. And two is collaborating with really amazing, awesome entrepreneurs who are, I'm just so honored to work with them because they are just, they're so compassionate and so intentional about everything that they do in their business. And they're just so down to earth. So I absolutely love working with my clients now. Um, and just as a fun fact, I do do some tutoring online still for some students because I do really love that as well. <laughs> so I have a mini workshop today that I'm super excited to talk about. Rena, I absolutely agree with you. Just get started on your email list, even if you don't even know what you're going to write, even if you are panicking, like, I don't even know what to write, just start one, because you'll set that foundation for yourself. So when you do have something to write, you have an audience to talk to. And I'm going to share my screen so we can see the slides together. Um, move it up there. Okay. So we're going to be talking about the three foundational strategies to generate and nurture quality leads with your email list. Um, I'm wondering in the chat if you could put really quick if you have an email list already. And if you don't, um, you can put in the chat how do you generate leads right now? Is it through social media? Use Facebook, LinkedIn? Instagram, do you have a YouTube or a podcast? Is that where you're generating leads? I'm just curious to know. Yes, ebook lead. Yeah, Rena. Marie Anna. Am I saying your name correctly? Yes, some awesome. Charmaine, am I saying your name correctly? Uh, have a few. Great. Yes. Okay, great. Awesome. 
so um, if I'm looking up this way sometimes, it's because I have some notes um, here that I'm looking at. Okay, so in uh, by the end of our workshop today, uh, these are the three things you're going to walk away with with a strategic plan. One is attracting quality leads. So in order to attract quality leads, it's about, as I've been talking about messaging. So messaging is important. You don't want to just attract anyone to your email list. You want to attract people who are going to be interested in your services, your courses, your programs. Um, just a really quick story. One of my clients who is a business coach and life coach, she decided she was going to write a Facebook ad to attract um, leads so that she can work with more clients. And she ended up attracting a ton of people. A lot of people were interested, but none of them were their, her ideal clients. <laughs> I don't think she said zero of them. They, they actually, what they needed was more therapy instead of coaching from her. And so this is the power of messaging. When you have the right message, you're going to attract the right people. The next thing you're going to walk away with is turning your leads into raving fans. You're going to be the superstar of your email list. And what it's really about is just making those human to human connections with your subscribers who are all wonderful, beautiful human beings. Um, so that's the second tip as uh, a third thing you're going to walk away with is really what you're about as a coach is really making a bigger impact for your people, whatever that is to help them live a more fulfilling life. And a part of that is the more clients you can book, the bigger impact you can make. And so seeing selling as not just salesy selling, but also but also the fact that the more services you can sell, the more bigger impact you can make. And this is all going to be about really, I'm sure a lot of you have heard marketers say it's about consistency and same thing with your email list. It's just about using a consistent strategy for long enough so that you can see it, you can see the results. A lot of people will just try something and give up. And that's why they say email is dead. I've heard, I heard someone say that two weeks ago to me when I was networking. They said, you don't think email, <laughs> email marketing is dead? I say, absolutely not. It is alive. It is kicking. And if you have the right strategies in place, you can really have your emails work for you instead of the other way around, you working for your emails. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you have any questions, save it till the end and we'll answer them at that time. <laughs> So here are our objectives for today. We're going to set up three strategic foundations to attract your ideal clients. Uh, we're going to outline your welcome nurture sequence, which I think is really primo space. I see a lot of people who have their email list. And yes, absolutely start your email list. But the first thing you can set up is a welcome nurture sequence. Um, and then we're going to go through today what types of emails you can write in your sequence so that it captivates, it helps you stand out from the crowd, and it leads to the next easy step for your readers to take to work with you. Then we're going to brainstorm some stories for your business, because a lot of times when it comes to writing email newsletters, people just don't know what to write about, and they get into panic mode, and they're not sure, they just ghost their list. So um, I have three simple steps to create emails that really resonate with your people. Um, so it keeps them engaged. And the fourth thing is identify four personal story markers. And this is really going to help build deeper connections with your leads and emails. I already introduced myself, so we can move on from that. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is setting up three strategic foundations to attract your ideal leads. So the first one is setting the purpose of your email list. I know it sounds very simple, but um, a lot of people start their email list not really knowing what is the purpose of the list. This is really going to help you align your messaging for your sequences, for your email newsletters, really for everything. This is 
the foundation that you want to set. So here's a, a list of purposes for your email list. You can take a look at those, write down um, any of those that you want to use for your email list. The last one, obviously, growing sales and revenue is the neon light, blinky light one that a lot of people are using their email list for. But it can also be for, you know, if you have a podcast, you're promoting your podcast through your email list. Um, it could be maybe you have a big following on YouTube or Instagram. And so your email list is really to direct them to that social media platform so they can engage with you more there. So when you, uh, so maybe you've got an email service provider already using ConvertKit, MailChimp, Kajabi, whatever that is. Um, there's several important reasons to identify the grounding purpose of your email list. One is uh, when you nail down the exact purpose for your email list, it's going to direct you for the types of content you're, you're going to create. Two, uh, when you have your goals set, it will help you decide which metrics to track in your email. So you can tweak your email copy, your messaging, and your segmenting. So you know exactly what metrics to look for. And then when you clarify your goals, you're ultimately going to lead to higher conversion rates. So these are the reasons why you really want to set the purpose for your email list. It's really going to help everything else. <laughs> the second thing is, um, and I've heard, I know you've heard all this before, is identifying your ideal customer or your customer avatar and their journey. So you wanna get really specific when you're envisioning your ideal audience members. This is gonna attract the quality leads that you're looking for. Think about their pain points, their objections, their dreams, their goals. And I know a lot, a lot of you have it all in your head. Like you can, you can name them all in your head, but really write them down because this is gonna be a great reference sheet for you when you are writing your newsletters, when you're writing your sequences, sales pages, blog posts, whatever content you're making, it's just nice to have this as a reference point um, to have it all written out. And then the other thing is really thinking about your ideal customers, um, their customer journey, where are they at in their journey? So did they just stumble upon you for the first time? Have they already watched you in action through a streaming or a recording? Have they been following you on social media and listening to your podcast and they're interested in your service? Really thinking about uh, what touch points have they had with you already um, before they join your email list. Uh, so an example is someone who might be in the awareness stage. That means they've just bumped into your brand for the first time and they're not ready to buy yet. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is curate a lead magnet or emails that provide value uh, in the form of actionable wins. I'm really into making things actionable. Don't just stay in the conceptual why, but really get down to what's one action they can take today or in the next week that will help them. And this shows them that one, you're building authority, but two, that it shows them that you can help them and gives them that uh, connection point for them. So you're already starting to build that no like trust um, in your first emails. So, and when I talk about conversion, like converting your leads, what we're really talking about is humans buying from humans. Don't forget that. It's not just about the numbers. You know, your subscribers aren't just faceless shadows or real people. You know, think about the fact that they laugh, they cry, they buy. These are all things to remember when you're selling, you're really building um, human relationships. Next. The third foundational strategy is getting clear on your brand voice. This is connected to brand values. If you have your values already done and your brand messaging and then brand voice kind of goes under this umbrella. And so your, your brand values are, they kind of serve as your compass that guides your brand story. It guides your actions, your behaviors, your decision-making process in your business. And when you have your brand values in place, this is going to help you um, uphold your, your mission and your vision. 
So anytime you feel like you're getting lost in the mix, always go back to your values. And so your brand voice is connected to your brand values and your brand voice is what you say. You know, a lot of people, when they talk, is a little different than their written voice. And so um, your brand voice is kind of a mix of taking your conversational words and putting it into what you might write as well. And I have a little exercise here to help you with your brand voice. Uh, this is something I also do with my clients. This is talking about your brand vibes. And so this list of words here, these are phrases and adjectives um, that you want to look through and just look through each word and just take a pause a minute and feel it in your gut, feel it in your body, which ones resonate with you. And you can write down the ones that really uh, light you up inside. And this is going to help you with um, creating a brand voice that aligns with who your business is, your personal brand. I can also share this link with Rena and she can share it with you too. So you can go through this. So some of the words are expressive, grounded, artistic, soul searching, adventurous, zen, certainty, all in, unconventional, determination, fierce, intuitive. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but just go like that through each one and just take a pause and think about what's your gut reaction, which ones light you up and write those ones down. And that's going to help you develop your brand vibes and your brand voice. And if we share this link, just to let you know on the second page, um, if you're looking more for brand values, here is a list of, it's a much bigger list. It's not exhaustive, but um, you can go through these and highlight what brand values you have to help you with your brand voice. Um, in the chat, if you could share one or two of the words that resonated with you, I'd love to hear which of the words resonated with you. Adventure, yeah, thanks for sharing. Anyone else? Soul search, mm, yeah, that's great. Great, oh, another one. Oh, can you show the values again? Sure. <laughs> For me, one of them is cozy really speaks to me. It, it just reminds me of sitting in a little reading nook and reading books. I absolutely love reading, um, especially um, kids literature. <laughs> and so cozy really resonates with me. If you have any more words, you can share them in the chat. And I can share this. The longer list is the values, yes. Let's see. I'm going to copy the link and put it in the chat so you can. There you go. I put the link in the chat so you can look through that list more. Okay, so to get clear on your brand voice, here are some other things you can do. One, another one is check out the competition. So look at your competitors' websites. Um, if they have an email list, join their email list, see what they're doing there. And that way you can see what doesn't resonate with you. Like, oh, uh, what doesn't work with that? Just knowing what doesn't work is going to help you understand what you do want for your brand voice and your brand values. Another activity you can do is 
uh, called try this, but not that. So for example, my brand voice could be witty, but not silly. Or my brand voice is humorous, but not at someone's expense. Or my brand voice is heady, but talks at the eye level of my audience. So this really helps you define what it is about and what it is not about. And the fourth activity you can do is make a word bank. And this means making a word bank of words that you use in conversation. If you're not sure what that might be, start noticing when you're talking to people, what kind of words you use. You use words like cool, awesome. Um, when you refer to uh, your group of people, do you call them your, your groupies, your tribe, your peeps? write those down. And also in your word bank, you can write down what kinds of food or shows or pop culture references that you like to talk about, because you're going you can use that in your content as well to create that connection driven copy in your emails. So that is the third foundational strategy is getting clear on your brand voice. Okay, so we're moving on to outlining your email welcome nurture sequence. So I want you to imagine this. You've invited someone onto your email list. So this is like inviting someone to your backyard dinner party. So when you invite someone to your backyard dinner party, maybe you've just met them for the first time and say, hey, come to... Um, I'm having a little dinner party, why don't you come? And so when they come, the first thing you wanna do is absolutely you want to, one, welcome them. Make them feel welcomed, celebrate that they came, say, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that you've come here. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting to know you better. And another thing is setting up expectations at a dinner party. You might say, um, just to let you know, dinner is starting at 6 p.m. We'll have some appetizers beforehand. You can grab a beverage. So setting up the expectations so they know what to expect when they're there. Uh, maybe even introduce them to some friends. The same thing for your email list. You want to set up the expectations. Talk about how frequently are you going to email them? Is it going to be weekly, bi-weekly, monthly? Um, also, set up the expectation of what kind of content you're going to share with them, what kind of valuable content, what topics are you going to be talking about, so they can they know what to expect when they're on your email list. The third thing is when you um, are at a dinner party uh, with people, you introduce yourself, you want to make them feel like, like they, you get them, that you're going to help them out, and that they've really made the right choice to come to your dinner party. Um, they're gonna have a, a, a lot of fun. They're gonna gain some new friends there. Same thing with your email list. You wanna make sure you introduce yourself. And um, I'm gonna talk about when you introduce yourself, what, what exactly to say about yourself that will make that connection with um, your audience. And the fourth thing is at a dinner party, you really wanna provide value. A value at a dinner party is absolutely food <laughs> and beverages. Um, you wanna make sure that they have appetizers, the, me the main meal, maybe some dessert. Think about what kind of beverages you're gonna serve. And for your email list, when you provide value, you really think about what is gonna be relevant to them, what's gonna be useful, and what's something, again, that I talk about is something that's just actionable. They can just take action on that day and get a small win um, from you. So you can share, this could be maybe a blog post that you've written, maybe freebies. This is where you can repurpose content. Maybe you have a video training uh, that you recently did you wanna share with them. And the fifth thing is when you invite someone to your dinner party, they've had a great time and now they're gonna leave. And as they're leaving, you, you know, what do you say to them? Are you going to say, hey, let's go on a two week Amazon rainforest uh, expedition together? You know, that seems like too big of a jump. <laughs> or you could say, hey, we had a good time. Why don't we go and grab some coffee? We can chat more. So same thing with your uh, email welcome sequence at the end of it. Uh, you don't want to sell something big like, we're going to the Amazon rainforest together for two weeks. Uh, you can do 
the next easy step, which is, what's the next easy step to work with you? Book a discovery call, maybe attend a live or evergreen webinar with you, or even buying a low ticket offer that you have. This is the next easy step that they can take with you at the end of their welcome nurture sequence. So those are things to generally think about when you're creating your welcome nurture sequences. Um, I'll just review really quick. One, making them feel welcome, celebrating that they're there, set up the expectations, um, introduce yourself, prov provide value, and then guide them to the next easy step to work with you at the end of your sequence. Uh, this is generally an example of an outline of what your welcome nurture sequence can look like. And sorry, looking at my notes. So usually in a welcome nurture sequence, you can have just one email and you can have up to five, six, seven, eight emails. It really depends on your goal and what you want to do and what you want to talk about. So there's no like set rule for how many emails to have in a welcome nurture sequence. And for me, at least for mine, I'm always tweaking mine. <laughs> so it's, it's the great thing about it is that you can go and see how the metrics are doing and tweak it from there. So in this uh, example I have, I have six emails in this sequence. So these are the different types of emails you can have for the sequence. So email number one, if you have a freebie or a lead magnet, the first email is really about one, welcoming them in, celebrating that they're there, and encouraging them to read the free lead magnet. And that's actually really important because people are busy, they sign up, and then they forget. They don't actually read it. And you want them to read it because you know that they're really going to gain some valuable content from you. And so this might also be a good place to um, do some housekeeping in terms of how to keep your emails out of the spam or promotional folder. Just tell them to add your contact to their email or um, make sure if they reply to your email, then they will, um, most likely your emails will not go to at the spam or the promotional folder. Um, and in terms of a call to action for each email, uh, definitely have a call to a clear call to action. A lot of times people will put too many call to actions in each email. They might say, uh, join me on Instagram and join me on Facebook and join me on LinkedIn and, uh, look at this, uh, free content that I have, or it's just too many, just keep it really simple. Just one CTA, maybe two CTAs. And think about what's what's the most important CTA you want them to do. Do you have a very um, engaged Facebook group? Then the first CTA you might want to do is join my Facebook group because that's going to be another connection point for them. Then the next email um, you could do is a MythBuster or an FAQ. If there's any frequently asked questions that you get all the time, you can address one of those here or a myth that um, people have about what you do. So for example, for coaches, uh, a lot of people are confused on what, what's the difference between a coach versus a therapist. So you can address that here. Um, another client I worked for, she's a professional organizer. She does a lot of, of things around mindset and organizing and a myth that a lot of people have about her profession is that she creates custom closets, California closets, which I didn't know what that was until I had met her. I don't, didn't know what California closets are. <laughs> Apparently it's a thing. And so she addressed that in there. I do not do California closets. This is what I do to help you. Um, email number three, this could be a good time to introduce yourself hear about me. This is about establishing credibility. Uh, a lot of people will kind of go on and on about their story. They, you don't have to have anything, you know, super traumatic in there. You don't have to talk about that. Um, it's what the about me is really about is how your experiences can help them. So it could be 
what kind of training you've had, maybe the degree you've gotten, or it's a personal experience that you've had that you know that will resonate with them and it will say to them, wow, they, this person really gets me. They really understand me. They're almost like in my head. So, and then I know a lot of um, copywriters say like your about me page on your website isn't really about you. It's about your ideal audience. It's kind of the same thing with the email, but I do feel like if you're going to talk about you, you should add some, um, just some fun facts in there about yourself because as we all, we're all people, we're all humans, and we are curious to know about, you know, what's your, what's your favorite uh, TV show, or what's your Enneagram type, or your Myers-Briggs type, things like that. So you can add those in. I feel like some copywriters really say you shouldn't put anything in there about you, but I would say, yes, put some things in there about yourself. Um, it's a great connection point too. Uh, another email you can do is a tip or a hack so this is where you're providing that value. Share just a simple tip that is actionable and easily implementable. Don't pick something that's super complicated or over their heads um, just so they get that small win and you build that connection with them even more. This is where you can start talking about, you know, if you're ready to work with me, when you're ready to work with me, um, have a call to action, like a book a discovery call or, uh, reply to this email or send me a DM and in Instagram and we can talk more. Uh, also for a tip or a hack, this is a great place to add in maybe even a link to a blog post you have, any other content that you have, um, because generally speaking in your email welcome sequence, if you're asking someone to reply to you in the email, most people won't reply because that's kind of a big commitment to them to reply and have some kind of response to you. So <clears throat> what you wanna do is you wanna keep them engaged by clicking on your content, or you can have in there the option to book a discovery call for you, with you. It's a little, um, a little easier of a commitment for them to make. Uh, another email you can do is very popular case study or testimonial. And you can have a few of these different ones in your, in your welcome sequence. Show them uh, clients that you've worked with, kind of choose a middle of the road example, not something where they've had like super crazy extreme success or on the other end. So that way you can kind of hit the average uh, clients that you uh, are looking to work for. And this is a great place to talk about um, <clears throat> What, what you did, what, what were their pain points, what were they struggling with, and how exactly you helped them, and even having the, their testimonial in there uh, to build that credibility up. And another email is talking about a pain point. Uh, this might be a great place to um, have your subscribers self-segment. So what that means is you might have two options with a hyperlink. And if whichever one they click on, it helps you segment them. So you give them the best uh, content for what you're looking for. for so for example, um, if you're a coach, one might be uh, I one might be like your ideal client, and the other might be like other coaches who might want to get coached or mentored by you. Um, <clears throat> So that's a great place to have in your email if you're looking to self-segment. If you're not ready for that yet, that's okay. You don't have to have that in there. Uh, once you've built up your list and you kind of have an idea of who's coming to your list, you can then put that in to help them self-segment. Also creating a survey in most email service providers have uh, an option to create a survey. This is a great way to keep your readers engaged. And also you get some more information from them um, so you might create something like, um, for example, like, uh, what are, what's, you might ask, like, what's something that you're really struggling with? One might be a uh, mindset, two might be a uh, time, I'm just too busy, three, so they can, it's like multiple choice, it's easy, they just click on the one that they're struggling with, and that's that. 
And then from there, that, that can be the end of your welcome nurture sequence. And then you can, for the call to action at the end, um, again, you can have an easy next step on how they can work for it with you. One might be book a discovery call. Another might be uh, watch a live or evergreen webinar. Um, so just uh, think about how, what's, what's the next easy step they can, they can work with you. That can also be um, uh, having a low ticket offer. If you have maybe, I mean, low ticket offer, the price you know, really depends on your services. It could range from $10, $20, $50, $100. Really depends on what your, what your pricing is but it's just the next easy step for them to get another win from you. And then you can, through your sequences, build up to your, your signature offer. Um, this is just the, this is what you're gonna be looking like <laughs> while you're creating your welcome nurture sequence. Okay, so we talked about the types of emails you write in your welcome nurture sequence. The next thing we're gonna talk about is storytelling. This is really my specialty and my passion is storytelling. And why storytelling is so important when you are writing your content. So this could be for your emails, it could be social media content, whatever that might be. Um, uh, what I notice a lot of people do when they have their email list and they are writing emails out is that they're just providing how-to tips, tips and hacks and tricks, which is great and valuable, but there are a lot of experts out there. There's a lot of coaches out there. How, what's going to really help you stand out is storytelling because your stories are unique to you. Um, and that's really gonna strike a chord with your readers. So um, I'm gonna talk about how to connect stories to your business so it makes sense and it's not random. You're just not telling random stories. Um, I heard someone say on Facebook the other, a uh, few weeks ago, I really liked what they said. They said, facts tell, stories sell. So you can have all your how-to tricks and tips all you want, but if you can connect it to a story, stories are gonna build that bridge from you to your ideal clients. Stories are memorable. You're gonna they're gonna remember it better and they're gonna connect it to whatever valuable content that you had to share. Stories really engage and build trust and storytelling guides your readers into a space of possibility, of hope, of what their life could look like. This is why I'm really passionate about storytelling and storytelling in a way that's genuine and authentic um, and really makes uh, that emotional connection with your audience because people will buy based on emotion and in their subconscious. So this is why I um, <clears throat> want to share with you my tips for how to do storytelling and how to connect it to your business through your email newsletters, your email sequences. You can add this into your welcome nurture sequence as well. So to talk about storytelling, I have a story. <laughs> this is me. I'm on the left side with the glasses in middle school. I think I'm in sixth grade and that's my sister, my younger sister, sister. She is eight years younger. We're both sporting really nice Lego haircuts from uh, my mom. <laughs> and in middle school, my mom said I could do a summer camp and I could choose whatever summer camp I wanted to do. And me being me, I chose to do this creative writing summer camp. I was really interested in creative writing. And my mom's like, really? Okay, that's what you want to do over the summer? <laughs> sure. So I went to this creative summer camp at the local community college. And I still remember to this day, the instructor of the course, the first day tells a story about this snowball fight that he had when he was a kid. And he told the story so 
so well that we were just totally hooked in and engaged and listening and holding on to every single word that he had to say. And that's when I got hooked into storytelling was when he told the story. And I was like, wow, that was so powerful. And I still remember that story to this day. This is the same thing with storytelling for your business. You want to create that same experience. Like people are hanging on to your words. They want to know what you're saying. They're engaged and hooked in. And they're going to remember what you have to say without a Lego haircut. <laughs> So actually I have a, oh, sorry. I think I need to go back. Oh, I'll go in here. I have an email example. Let me exit out and see. Oh, here it is. Here we go. So this is a, an example of using storytelling in your emails. This is, uh, email newsletter that I sent out to my list. And just wanna show you the structure really quickly. So I basically tell a story, I hook the reader in, I tell my story, and then I connect it to what I was wanted to talk about. So what I wanted my readers to take away was some tips on how to find their written voice. And so I have, three tips here on how they can find their voice. So make a list of words that you use in conversation, uh, write in stream of conscious, like a journal and use spoken word, use a voice memo app like that. And then I sign off and give a CTA. So I wanted to show that to you really quickly because it connects to this donut graph. I love donut graphs because I love donuts. <laughs> if you start at the cats with the donut over here, you wanna start with when you wanna tell a story and you wanna connect it with your business so that it's not random. First, you need to think about is what's, what's the takeaway or what's the lesson you want them to learn. So from my email example, my takeaway was here are some tips to help you find your writing voice. So you have the takeaway or the lesson. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pick a story that connects with that takeaway or the lesson. This is the tricky part for a lot of people. Um, if you have a bunch of stories, uh, just story notes written out, it's easy just to pick from them. Uh, I have, that's what my free lead magnet is. If you want to uh, download it, it tells you it's, uh, exactly how to do these three steps, but it also gives you story prompts. So you have a list of stories to pick from. So it's easy. So I picked a story. My story was talking about how I found my voice in high school from a sock puppet. So that was the story. So you hook them in, you're gonna start with a story starter technique. And in my free lead magnet, I talk about how I have six different types of story starters that will hook your readers in. I guess that first sentence, your email is really important to hook them in so they keep reading um, for my example here. So here my hook was, it was dark, my eyes needed to readjust to the fluorescent classroom lights. It just crawled out from under a desk that was covered by a blanket. So there's my hook. The segue is also can be a tricky part. Um, and in my free lead magnet, I have a bunch of different examples of segues that work. So you segue from your story to talking about your business. So, for example, here, um, so here's my segue. Luckily for you, no sock puppets or room full of smelly teens required. I've got three methods to help you hone in your authentic voice. So that's how I segue into talking about um, my tips. And then you talk about your business, your tips, whatever it is, and eat this donut graph because it's super tasty. <laughs> Okay, sorry, how do I get to the next slide here? 
Okay, the last thing is identifying four personal story markers. Um, so story markers, sorry, I'm going to my notes. So your personal story markers, you're gonna use in your emails and it's gonna come up as a theme all the time. And personal story markers are things in your life that you post about. Uh, think about your social media feed, what you post about a lot, your, your kids, for me, it's donuts, ice cream, it's talking about nature. Um, what are things you're always talking about or what are you known for by your friends? Uh, and these story markers, you're gonna refer to continually in your emails. And these are the themes or things or ideas that come up all the time in your emails. So people will identify with you with these themes. So they really feel like they know you, you're making that, you're developing that relationship. Like they feel like they really know you like, oh yes, she's always, she's always talking about her Corgi or whatever that is. So for example, uh, my personal story markers that I refer to a lot in my emails, my email readers will know, is one, I do talk about food, like donuts, ice cream, <laughs> dark chocolate. Um, another is my husband here, this, this picture here of my husband and I at Halloween, we dressed up, I dressed up as Ali Wong, he dressed up as um, uh, Axel Rose. <laughs> so I talk about a lot about my husband. Um, or not a lot, but I refer, I, I refer to him in my emails. Another is I'm really into the Great British Bake Off show right now. I know they have been in at 10 or 11 seasons, but I'm usually late to the game with, with uh, shows. I just started watching it last year and I'm really into it. So I use that. And then uh, the fourth personal story marker is I'm really into the outdoors. I live in Colorado with the mountains. And so I spend a lot of time in nature. So I talk about hugging trees, sitting on rocks, going to the creek. So those are my personal story markers that I bring up once in a while in my emails. So people build that relationship with me. And that is it, which is my last slide. Um, I am an email copywriter for coaches and women entrepreneurs. So if you'd like to work with me, I have done for you email sequences and done with you one-on-one -on -one consulting where I do live walkthroughs of your email and do copy tweaks so that you can go and tweak it yourself. That is it. Oop. Sorry. Wait. There we go. Thank you so much, Joanne. This was very, very interesting. I took some notes and definitely got, got a lot of good insights that I could implement. So what common mistakes do you see coaches specifically make when it comes to thinking about their emailing sequence, drafting it, designing it, updating it and such? If you have any questions, by the way, drop them in the chat. Those of you who've been watching us on Facebook as well, let us know if you have questions. I'll pick them up from there. But yeah, this is my question. Sure. Um, I would say the biggest thing to really work on for coaches is uh, what you end up getting into a writing paralysis is because um, you need to create an outline first for your sequences. So kind of like what I did showed you, email number one, what was the topic, email number two, three, and then just bullet points for what you might talk about. You can even put into there what story might connect to whatever topic that is in the email. Once you have an outline set and you have that, it's gonna be much easier for you to write your sequences. Um, it's gonna be so much faster to write your sequences that way because you can just refer to your outline. You can see the structure that you're gonna use um, and you have all the information that you need in there already. Um, another thing is, I think I've talked about this already, but um, keeping to one or two call to actions for each email, because the more call to actions you have, the more confused your reader is gonna be, they're not gonna know what to click on, there's too many things. So just have one or two hyperlinks in there. 
Um, you can also test out because email service providers have A-B testing and test out if buttons work better for your readers. Do they like clicking on buttons or do they like clicking on hyperlinks? And when you do a hyperlink, make sure to try and sprinkle it throughout the body of your email, maybe one closer to the beginning, one in the middle and one at the end and uh, experiment with the length of those hyperlinks, have one that's maybe a little shorter, one's medium length, one is maybe like a full sentence hyperlink. Excellent. So when it comes to the stories, um, I assume one story is not enough. So how do you figure out which story to tell, which one would resonate the most? Uh, and how to link it then, then to some sort of a offer, some sort of a CPA. What, what is your strategy? Because there are many stories that we can tell about ourselves. Yes. So the thing with stories is you can have a story that happened to you recently. Maybe it was just last week. You're writing a newsletter. You're going to write it in a week. And you, let's say you just, you go outside and it starts to rain. You, your plans are ruined for the day. And that you're thinking in your head, oh, that kind of is like my clients when they're dealing with this mindset block. And so you can write, what I usually do is I just have my phone on me. And if I have a moment where something happens to me that week, and I go, oh, that could connect to something that I can talk about with my client. I'm oh, sorry, my, not my client, my um, subscribers. Then I usually put it in my notes app in my phone. So I keep a record of these stories or I just use my phone and I email it to myself. So I have it in my email. And what I use is I have a, I use Airtable, which is a very customizable spreadsheet. It's super awesome. They have a free version. You should check it out. Um, I keep all my stories logged in there. And so, so you can use stories that happened to you recently, just like little things. You go to the coffee shop or you go for a hike, something like that. Um, another story you can use is more of an origin story, something that happened to you in the past that was kind of a bigger uh, experience for you that changed you somehow. So you can write these stories down to have um, to help you figure out which ones might connect with uh, your readers and um, other stories you can use is you don't have to, it doesn't have to be a story about yourself. It could be about your ideal clients. This is kind of like case studies or testimonials, or you can tell a story where you're, you're, you're making, it's not like a specific person, but you want to tell a story about what their life is like at the moment and how their life changed. You can um, tell stories that way too. So it can be like a kind of like a made up story, but you're helping your reader imagine something for their life that is a possibility or a hope for them. Uh, so those are all different types of stories that you can um, go from uh, and just, just keep a, a log of them in it's like you can use Asana, Trello, at Google spreadsheets, uh, keep track of them in there. So that way, when you are going to go write, you can look through your stories and see which ones would connect. So we have a couple of, a couple of questions in the chat. So Deb is asking, she's struggling with, um, with starting to write on a blank page. What's the best way to get unstuck when it comes to, yeah, when, what's the best way to get past the, uh, the writing block? Yes. So what I talked about is one, having, having that list of ideas, having a list of stories. Um, if you are interested, you can download my freebie and my free guide. Basically it helps you kick writing paralysis out the door. And it has the three simple steps for how to use storytelling, but it also has prompts so that if you're not even sure what kind of stories to tell, it has um, I think I have 25 to 30 prompts in there that will just get your brain going to help you think about what kind of stories you can tell. Um, and then also I have examples for story starter techniques and segues. So if you're not even sure how to write that, you can use one of those examples in there to help you get going. Um, that's really the best way is having 
a list of your stories and then also having an outline if you're writing a sequence having an outline and sequencing that sorry i'm just trying to put your links under the video um, we have another question which is um would you would you use bitly to shorten the links when you put them in the email yeah that's a it's a great way to use it yeah you can use bitly to shorten your links um usually i mean usually you have it hyperlinked in your email anyway so they can't actually see how long the link is so i don't think that's too much of a problem but yeah bitly is a great way to shorten your links oh that's that's a good hold on <laughs> let me go back a little bit so when you put the links in your email, you definitely want to hyperlink it. So don't put the link, the actual link in your email. You want to create a copy, the text, and then highlight it and have that link to the link because that's going to get your readers to engage more when you have copy that gives them a clear call to action. I don't see any more questions. I'm just mindful of the time. Those of you who are watching this on Facebook, I've just put all the links that John has shared with me uh, be beforehand under the chat. Okay. I'm not sure if any of those links actually contain that contains that freebie that you said that people can download. Yeah. So if you have that link and you want to drop them in the chat, I'll pick it up from there and also put it under the video. Sure, I can put that link in. Thank you so much for joining everyone. Um, Joanne, any kind of like closing words? Sure, yes. Sorry, hold on. I'm going to get the link. Sure. Here. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I definitely learned so much, and it's worth watching the replay again and take notes again and kind of like try to implement. And those of you who are interested, feel free to reach out to Joanne, and I'm sure she'll be happy to chat with you about how she can support you, be it through consulting or be it through actually writing your, your emailing sequences. So yeah, any co closing remarks? Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for listening in, everyone. If you're listening to replay, <laughs> thanks for being here. I'm just so excited. I love working with entrepreneurs and coaches. Um, you guys are the best. <laughs> uh, as a teacher, I really, um, I really feel like doing work that's meaningful and purposeful to you is so important and. For me as a teacher going into email copywriting, I feel like my purpose is fulfilled because I love helping other people and collaborating with them and getting them to um, sell things. I definitely before was, I was like a lot of you, I did not like selling. The word sell just made me feel super icky. Um, but when I realized when I went through my trainings to become a marketer and a copywriter is that it's really just about building human relationships. Um, that's what it comes down to. And I'm like, yes, that is absolutely what I'm for. So um, thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Excellent. So there is definitely so much power in having your own emailing list. You hear it all the time. You never know how Facebook might change, LinkedIn, Instagram, all of those. And followers, followers, having followers, followers mean nothing, really. They, they, they're there, but you don't have the contact. There is no way of following the, up with them again. So it's really always better to start bringing people into your world. And the best way of doing that is really through that emailing list. And most people, they sell, they would not sign up with you just, you know, seeing you for the first time. This, this ability to nurture, to nur nurture that relationship, to add value, to bring them more and more into your world, being able to see, did they click on that link? Did they like that video? Did they participate? Did they join? Did they reply? It's kind of like giving you that so much more kind of like leeway to, to finally, eventually feel comfortable enough. Those of you who are afraid of sale, selling and just selling, but somehow you, you, you feel just energetically or emotionally, mentally, whatever, on all those levels. But maybe now it's a good time to actually ask them to support you in some way, join you for something, pay you for something that you've created. And it's in those conversations with clients that 
actually you get to know them better. That's when you can create even better content, more customized content. New stories can emerge, new ideas can emerge, new products can emerge. So definitely um, reach out to Joanne if you feel like she, she might be a good fit for you to work with. Thank you so much, Joanne, for being with us. And as you know, we have now Mondays and Thursdays every week, this, this little podcast. So join us. We have more speakers coming up. And check out the Facebook group under the events section. There are plenty, plenty of events announced. And will be more announced. We are fully booked until July. So uh, exciting things coming your way. And thank you so much for being with us. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.